In this video we're going to do a Raspberry Pi 5 unboxing. We're also going to install the Bookworm 64-bit operating system and blink some lights on the GPIO. It's now the festive time of year in case you want to try something like this. The Raspberry Pi 5 just arrived from Seed Studio. I ordered this on September 28th and it shipped on November 11th and uh, I'll open it up now. Alright, we got some stickers. Pi 5. Nice. Alright, so it's the Pi 5 by itself. I have a power supply that I was previously using for a Pi 4, which I'm going to hook up. Here's a HDMI to micro USB adapter. It's plugged in right here. I'm going to use a USB hub with mouse and keyboard. And then here is the power supply. The first thing I'm going to try to do is put in this SD card. It has the 64 bit bullseye uh, Raspbian operating system on it. I use this on my Pi 4. I'm just going to see if it boots right up on the Pi 5. Let, let's see. Alright, I tried booting up and look at this. Oh, it said the operating system is not supported. Alright, I just finished installing the operating system using this Pi Imager 1.7.5 and then installing this new Bookworm operating system 64-bit and it looks like it was just put uh, put out 10 10 23 I just imaged it onto this SD card Kingston 8 gig it's nice because it's not too big and then I'm going to use I put a little piece of tape at this the end here and mark it that's how I kind of keep track of uh, you know what's on what sometimes I don't want to put it back in the computer here we go the first boot sequence We are all booted here for the first time, and this is the home screen. I opened up the Chromium browser, and this is the first thing we went to. Kind of cool. Two to three times the speed of the Pi 4. We have the Pi 5 here. For testing purposes, I've connected up a couple LEDs to a breadboard here. This one's on. We have two 220 ohm resistors and uh, the longer end of the LED is the plus side so each each of these is going to get connected to a separate output. So just for testing purposes here we go. These, these are working. 3.3 volts coming out of the top left pin here and then this is ground. This is three pins down. All right, this LED is finally blinking here. That's connected to output 25. Now, something very important to note is that the GPIO access is different on the Pi 5 versus the Pi 4 due to this new chip, the RP1. So, it took me a while to figure out how to get this to work. But the most helpful article I found was this one here. And the key is this, this libgpiod. This line here is key. sudo apt-get install libgpiod2 and then libgpiod dev dash dev. So you install that. And then I'll show you the program. Here's a program written in C that'll blink the LED output 25, turn it on for half a second, and then turn it off for half a second. 
And then what you do is you take that, put it somewhere you, like desktop, and then compile it using this line here. And then you run it with this line. And you should get something like this. Note, this is different than the Pi 4. On the Pi 4, I was able to get things going with lines of code like this. Echo 4, Echo out, Echo 1, to control the export direction and value. But on this, I had to go through this new GPIO MEM4 due to the RP1 chip. Here's another version. This turns on and off outputs uh, 16 and 25 at the same time. Who knows, maybe you can make some kind of Christmas decoration with this. I'll also include this in the links in the description. Yeah, you have to include uh, this here. Otherwise, it's not going to compile. It's going to have a linking error. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Next week, we'll go over installing the GNOME system monitor tool on the Pi 5. And we'll also run the OpenAI Whisper C++ speech-to-text model. And we're going to look at the performance compared to the Pi 4. Alright, happy programming everybody.